Boy, that guy hit like a freight train. Woo! everyone, I'm Mike Carey with Northwest Fishing Reports. And I'm Rob Holman. We're coming to you from beautiful Vancouver Island, the sleepy little town of Zabalos. We've just completed three days of fishing with guide Adrian O'Connor of Real Obsession Sport Fishing. It's our third year back fishing with Adrian and our third year of member adventures. It's been a great time. Man, it's amazing. And if you look around, Mike, the weather was exceptional this year. Yeah, we can't complain about the weather. It's gotten better every single day we've come out here. You know, I love doing the member adventures. Every year we get to see guests coming to the lodge from Northwest Fishing Reports. They hear about the lodge through the website, and um, when they come away, they're all saying the same thing. They want to come back. That's right. We have saw people from Idaho, uh, Oregon, all over Washington over the three years of member adventures here in Zabalas. Adrian runs a great ship. He's got really excellent staff. The food is incredible. I gained weight. Yeah, we, both, <laughs> we both gained weight. We got to go on diets. And, uh, <laughs> right. It's just been amazing every single day. His guides are top notch getting uh, the guests on fish. Adrian's always running great equipment and we always learn something. We fished for three days and the first day we were fishing, uh, we did a little salmon fishing in the morning and then we went for halibut. We had uh, Dave Mason, uh, the voice of Northwest Fishing Reports, and his wife Doreen joining us. And uh, maybe we should take a look at some of that footage. It was their first trip up here and uh, they had a blast. But let's uh, let's uh, show you what I think, uh, I ran think you'll into. see. Yeah. That'll speak for itself. Good luck, guys. Let's go fishing. that down on the bottom and let them yeah good bait yeah yeah we got about half the fish on it yesterday yeah nothing like coming back seeing old friends traveling to places we've been before we're out here at Zabalos we're setting up for halibut fishing today. We've got the voice of Northwest Fishing Reports, Dave Mason, and his wife Doreen with us. Rob and I are out here with Adrian O'Connor of Real Obsession Sport Fishing. Nice smooth ride out here. Yeah, not bad. We got a, got a good morning this morning. Looks like the rain's passed up to the inside. Uh, the forecast isn't calling for much more wind than this, and halibut fishing's been really good, so I think we're in for a good morning. Anchors anchored to the balls, and yep. then it just gives us that little bit of cushion. If you ever need to unhook for any reason, yep. you know you can just unhook nice. and leave it. We're gonna give them a little, uh, a little uh, variety this morning. We're gonna start with some uh, fresh octopus we caught a couple days ago. Uh, we've got some mackerel and some salmon bellies as well. So we'll let them decide uh, what they want. Throw down a little procure butt juice into our scent tubes. We got a double, uh, double hook up here. Circle hook up on the front, Big J on the back. Okay. Come on the line, let her go down. We're gonna go all the way down the bottom. Okay. 269 or 70 feet. We're on a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a knob here, oh, okay. right? We call a little pinnacle. It's really just a boulder pile. You know, holds the rockfish, the octopus, the stuff that these uh, set halibut are eating. Okay. With the uh, motion of the ocean here, uh, we don't need to jig these uh, rods too much. Uh, we got enough action on the bait there. We're just going to let them do their thing, get that scent trail going, and bring those fish in under the boat. Oh my God. Girl. How are you doing, Doreen? Working out. It's a workout, huh? Oh, yeah. Bring your wife. I'm the only woman on this boat. Please. <laughs> it's okay to bring your wives on these trips. It's got a nice one, man. It feels good. Let's try. 
Not on the side of the uh, handle. I think yeah. Only 500 more feet. Uh, yeah, you, she's at 100 feet there. Just watch that line goes on uh, nice and uh, straight under that spool. Okay, keep it under the water. Stop winding. She's at about 15 feet. Could have got any more, uh, four more perfect fish for you guys. Oh wow! <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Salmon bellies. You just it pays sometimes just to give them a few different options. Right? That fish would have picked up one of the other ones, but uh, now he's in the boat now. <laughs> Dorian, what do you think? Is that your first halibut? Yes, ever. Hey, <laughs> hang on. Nice. Yeah. Get up here. I think the coolest thing for day one had to be the one halibut and caught by two anglers. Was it a double? Was it a double? I don't know. Does that qualify <laughs> for a double? Um, Dave hooked up on a fish over on his side of the boat. And then right away Mike's got one. And both rods are going. And then Adrian's like, wait a minute. I think we got a hungry fish here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was playing my fish Sometimes it would tug really hard and then it would kind of lighten up and I'm like, that's odd. And <laughs> Dave's over there doing the same thing with his fish. Or My fish, fish later on was a lot harder. <laughs> you guys had it easy on that one. <laughs> yeah, we did. But as you can see from the footage, uh, we brought this guy up and lo and behold, it's one big old halibut with two different sets of bait in it. The uh, big problem was who was the, gonna get the yeah, fish? Yeah, who got that fish? And I, I mean, we'll have to take a look. We'll show you how it happened. That's called release there. Oh, that's an alley. That was a funny bite, but. Oh, are we doing the same there thing on the other side? You got him? Yeah. Doubled up. Got him. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Watch the uh, prop there. Size. What was that, Dave? That's a way bigger fish than last time. Mike, you got something there? Yeah. I don't think okay. he's... Not a big one. Not a big one. Dave's dealing with something here. <laughs> got a little baby. Got to get to work. Yeah. That was on, I think we got one on that, one on the macro, one on the octopus there. Say so. again? One on the macro and uh, one on the octopus. Way bigger fish than last time. Usually how it goes, we go through a few smaller yeah, ones right, and then the big, big, big ones. This kind of needs that scent line to come start working. You got color, Dave? Well, not quite yet. You guys got the same fish. Hold on a second here. The red dot on? Yep. Hold on. You boys got the same fish, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Why are you guys been fighting each other? I, no, I think he, he came and took both baits, I'm oh, guessing. Wow. It sure seemed like it, the way that those took off. I think, uh, has he got, okay, keep it down. Whoa, whoa, don't lift him out of the That's water. That's a true Northwest. There you go, look at that. He's got both hooks in his mouth. He's got both hooks in his mouth. Holy cow. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't think he was quite that big because they were both bringing him up at the same time. <laughs> It took two Double retrieve! It took two of you to get that thing in. We must have been doing something right, but that's a beautiful fish. That's perfect. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, look at that. Oh, he had both? Yeah, he got both hooks straight in his mouth. Oh, yeah. my God. Nice job, guys. How about a high five from you two? No, yeah. Team effort. Like Gary. <laughs> Double. It takes two anglers to catch halibut up here in <laughs> BC. So Please. now the problem is, whose fish is it? Yeah, who gets going? Who hooked it first? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was Dave, actually. Mike's just and always so generous. And, uh, he was pretty weak. He got both of them right in the corner of his wow. mouth, though. So he, he wanted both of those things. That, that is amazing. Halibut! Big fish. That, that fish right there is the, the maximum slot size limit for us this year. So that fish is right on the 115 centimeter mark. So that's a, that's a beautiful fish for us to, uh, to get for the first fish of the morning here. We've been here about 25, 30 minutes maybe. Had a few bites, got that nice yellow eye. And then, uh, yeah, that guy picked up both the baits. That's pretty awesome. Since Dave got the first bite and set the hook. It's your fish. I caught the first fish today, but we're going to give this one to Mike. This is Mike's halibut. I get an assist. <laughs> I think there's enough meat there that we could share it. Yeah. 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 Right on, guys. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Looks like we got a bite going on this one here, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a good bite, too. Heck Watch yeah. It. Put your rod to the back of the boat there, Rob. Look back. Look back. That's Double not header again. Fish. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, this time it's a different fish. Okay, Rob, I'd like you to come around the other side of the boat here. Okay. This man, I'll come and grab that rod. Oh, yeah. Mike. Yeah, there we go. We've been sitting here quiet for about 30 minutes and then both rods yeah. buckle again, eh? Yeah. Got a couple nice looking fish actually, the way they hit. And... Oh, man, this is a good fish. That's a good fish. Ah. Yeah, he's taking some line back. It's pretty common, Adrian, to double up like this when they come in. They do, you know, a, a theory that I got is that those fish were there. One of them got aggressive, got on the bite, and it, it triggered the other one. You know, because you do get a lot of double headers, you know, get the odd triple. I've even had all four rods go, and you know, after we were sitting there for 30 minutes, I don't think both those fish just magically showed up at the same time and each picked a bait, right? So I think they, uh, I think they, you know, one will trigger another one into into biting. Well, that ah. they did. <laughs> Mike, how you doing? Art? A little oh, bit of burn. Yeah. Had a nice run there. Yeah. We'll be filling up the freezer. <laughs> Mike's only have, he only has three pieces of halibut left from last year, so yeah. Mike's on a mission. The last season, the halibut you got here got you through the whole winter. It did. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Between the halibut and the salmon, I've been having fish every week. Oh, look at that! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hang on. Oh, look at that fish go. That's pretty good. Oh. Yeah, I can tell the way to run. No, I'm not even close to the boat, man. It keeps pulling out every time I get something in. I think both of those were on the octopus, both off that one side. Of the... I think we went triple up. <sighs> Oh. <laughs> That's experience right there though, right? I don't want to blow myself out on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember the fish is taking a break too. Well, I don't know if I made any fun of I don't feel like I've made any progress. All that treadmill time Mike's paying off. Yeah. Some bicep curls. Come on, fish. Let's make progress. <sighs> Let's see how big that fish is. Hey. <laughs> you see him out? You see him out there, Dave? Oh, well, that's a perfect fish. That's a perfect fish. fish. Yep. Wind up a little bit. All right. Yeah, another beauty. Wow. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. Beautiful. Sweet. 
Okay, that one's only a couple centimeters smaller than that other one. We're, we're right in the uh, right in the perfect size limit. Remind everybody here in BC with Adrian, there's an over and under fish that you get to keep for yeah. two fish travel limit. One fish uh, it is allowed to be up to about 45 pounds or it's 115 centimeters is the exact regulation. And the second fish is around 15 pounds, 83 centimeters. And that's your travel possession, what you can go home with uh, from British Columbia. Fantastic. And it looks like hey, Mike's uh, got his fish up here, so I'm gonna- Yeah, hey, uh, get hey guys. <laughs> oh, are you still on, Mike? Hey, hey guys, my turn. <laughs> that's a big fish. Um, okay, about the size of that first one there. Just hold on to that for a second. Yeah, I got the rod, Mike. Here. Come on, baby. That guy is right on the button of 115 centimeters. All right. Wow. What amazing awesome. fishing. Oh, man. Yeah, nice little box of fish there. That's start. a double. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is. True double. <laughs> right on. Awesome. Good job, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Beautiful. This guy puts us on every year, man. This is. Something to look forward to, huh? Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, we're pretty lucky. That was, you know, another centimeter or two, and that guy we would have had to release, so that's pretty nice. Yeah. Awesome. I thought he was going to be too big. Great eating fish, too. Great eating fish. Oh, yes. Yeah. This year, there's no yellow eye retention, and uh, Adrian's very aware of conservation of this great fishery that they have, you know, and, it, and the great sporting opportunities they give us. He always has been. He's a mm -hmm. great sportsman. Every year we come here, he does emphasize having catching a lot of fish, but also having fun and taking care of the resource. Right. And so, yes, this year you cannot keep yellow eye up here. So Adrian has one of the better releases that's available out there on the market. Yeah, I really appreciated that system. And we seem to have a really effective release ratio. Uh, didn't see, we did. I've heard horror stories of some of these release systems and uh, you know we had a lot of clean releases of those bottom fish. The way the release works is it's pressure triggered and when that uh, release hits a certain depth the uh, release opens up and the fish swims off. That air bladder is, is decompressed and the fish is okay and, and survives the descent. Right. Hey take a look at a good clean release right here. You got something, Dave? Something's on there. Just like Adrian said, a little bit of movement, and then he took it down. So he had like a little tap tap, he's playing with the bait. A little tap tap, and then. Might be small halibut the way it's coming up. How's it, how's it feel, these little halibut? Not too bad. Yeah, it's fading right. When it gets there, just keep it down underneath the water. Don't lift it right up to the surface for me. Deal with it. It's a yellow fin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Decent sized one. Wow, that is decent sized. Wow, that's a real big one. It's beautiful. There's no retention this year. Oh, they gotta go back. Yeah, will you film him? Wow. Wow. Picture that. That's cool. So, Adrian, tell us about the the wreck this year on Yellow Eye. Zero retention on uh, on Yellow Eye in British Columbia starting this year, as uh, because this is a very healthy old fish. Uh, we're gonna get the uh, descending unit out, and we're gonna try to send this guy back down to bottom and uh, let him decompress. Beautiful fish, though. Awesome. Wow. Really yeah. neat. We got him on our unit. He's going to release at about 150 feet. We want him to go about uh, halfway to two-thirds of the way down, and then they'll finish the swim off themselves 
They should be, uh, the, the majority of that gas is, should be all out of them by the time they get down halfway to two thirds. And uh, that unit I have set it to release at 150 feet. All right, we got a full box here. It's 10 to 10, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, not a bad start to the morning, a start to the trip anyways. Let's Great go. way to start the trip, man. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Four beautiful fish. We couldn't have asked, uh, asked for anything better than that, definitely. And we still got the rest of the day to go. Was a big fish that first day started off with that double that yeah. wasn't a double the double yeah and then the halibut ended with a double that was a double a double that was a double and that was uh you and i that's right hooking up pretty much simultaneously mm -hmm. and again big halibut right right at the top end of that slot we couldn't find any small fish this first day every <laughs> halibut was at least 113 to 115 centimeters Barrier point. Barrier point. Um, fishing close into the kelp. Pretty amazing stuff. Only fishing in about 60 to, oh, 50 to 60 feet. We're adjusting those downriggers all the time because there's little pinnacles and things, yep. but to, to skirt that kelp bed, uh, I would say the deepest it was was 60 feet. And when we say skirting the kelp, we're talking about literally Adrian <laughs> picking the downrigger arm up as we go by the kelp. I mean, we were that close to it, but it triggered a lot of action. There were a lot of Chinook that were just sitting on that on that kelp edge there trying to ambush bait fish that were coming in and out of the kelp. We had a lot more opportunities than fish landed. It was tough, and Dave found out the hard way that uh, <laughs> you, it's not so easy to catch a Chinook on these single action reels and barbless hooks. They put up a heck of a fight uh, it's just a blast though. Oh, a lot. I know he, he ended up getting a good one and we'll show you that, but I will say f to the voice of Northwest Fish Run Ports, if this was baseball, you'd be out. <laughs> no. <laughs> let's check out, let's check out Dave's first salmon. We got a spoon down on the one side, a little um, Gibbs Delta Skinny G. The color's called a herring aid. And we're gonna put an anchovy on the other side. Silver Glow Purple Flasher with a 602 uh, teaser head color on it. Trolling pretty shallow. A few of the other boats were in here this morning. They are picking them up 25, 30 feet. So we're going to get right in on the kelp and uh, see what happens here. We're right in the middle of the tide here. And uh, we got low slack coming up in about another three hours. So uh, we'll just find this spot fish as well on the high tide or the low tide. So. Barrier Point one of the more uh, well-known uh, salmon fisheries around here. Definitely one of our one of our favorite spots to fish. Uh, consistently produces fish all through the season. All the tide line into the right here, Mike. Just keep that tide line right off, you know, 10, 15 feet off our edge there. You mean Mike's driving the boat? <laughs> uh, We're holding on to the handle. The line can't go anywhere like a conventional reel. Yep. So when that fish is pulling, just move your hand away. That reel's gonna spin around. Watch your knuckles. These drags are really nice on here. Yep, just move your hand away, keep your rod up. Face the fish, I'm gonna have the tension set on it. Just face that fish with the rod up. When he's gonna allow you to get some line, you wanna keep that line tight. We are using barbless hooks. Okay. But the big thing is when he wants to pull, really let him pull. Let him pull. Let him take that line out, move your hand away from the reel. Okay. Watch the kelp might turn out a little bit. Actually got a lot of kelp growing already for this time of the season. It's early. Yeah. Okay, I can grab that wheel, Mike. Thank you. I feel better. Sure, Dave. Take the chair. Hey. I've been checked off. Come on now. Uh, oh man, this is nice, eh?
always face that fish with that rod. Just come to the line, it'll come on that reel nice and straight then. tight there 35 feet that one was on the anchovy and getting most of our action there on the spoon but uh, yeah nothing wrong with that one right good, here good. Adrian O'Connor real obsession fishing good start. check them out I got the good fortune of being up next and hooked into a, a nice Chinook but it really didn't fight that hard and I was quite surprised Especially when I saw it because sure. it was a Beauty. it was a good sized fish. We discovered after the fact when we got him in that the the hooks had actually hooked his mouth shut. And Adrian explained when that happens, sometimes it uh, makes the fish fatigue faster. They're not pushing oxygen through the gills. Right, they can't get the mouth open. Right, no open mouth, no circulation uh, of water through the gills, and and they peter out a lot faster. But nonetheless. Got the fish in the boat, and uh, it, was it was a beautiful beauty. fish, and I was happy with that. Let it go, let it go. my favorite part I know I'm you're gonna be amazed by this <laughs> and it's not just because I landed that big fish but just the fight of it was epic I love experiencing that type of fishing and seeing what those big fish can do this one you know a 20 pound for early June uh, ocean bright heck of a fish heck of a fight mm -hmm. a whole lot of fun a whole lot of fun let's check it out oh fight 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 Right there. 
This is why I love this place. Such a different experience, man. See my mom hop down there. So sporty catching these fish up here. With the chance for one or two, man. It really is epic. Like Looks like a nice fish out there. Oh, come on. Oh, look at that tail. Yeah! Oh, right. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh. Right here, right here. Oh. All right, look at that fish. Gosh, I love it. Keep going. Let's wind up. Wind up. Let's yeah, I'll leave it there back. You go. Good one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. All right, Good man. Fish. Gosh, I love it. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave with that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. What's your number again? Yeah. Here we go. Beautiful. Holy cow, Two man. Five, you know what? Look at that. Two, one. That's the fish that we just five, broke off five, a couple four. minutes ago, or somebody did. Four, four. Look at, oh, that's right. Yeah. Back. That's not our hook, but he broke somebody else off this morning, and we got him. What a oh, brute, huh? That? Nice fish. Man, man. totally hot up. <laughs> this, gosh, it's so fun out there, man. All right. Gorgeous. Thanks a lot, man. Gosh, Hang I on. the chance to get out here. Little sea lights on there. The ocean bright. There you go. Hey, Rob. All right. Yeah. Oh. That fish alone, man, makes the whole trip up here <laughs> worth it. Yeah, that fight, eh? Gosh. Uh, isn't that something? Nothing like it. So sporting, so fun. A little more here. Day two of the Northwest Fishing Reports Salmon Adventure up here in Zabalos, BC with Real Obsession Fishing and Adrian O'Connor. Rob, an incredible weekend up here. Doreen, my wife and I had a great time with these salmon. First trip here, we love it. I'm glad you guys made it. It's our third year. Unfortunately, we've got to say goodbye to you guys. Yeah. But we've got a whole nother group, don't we? We got a new crew coming in for our 2018 members adventure with Northwest Fishing Reports. You know, all good things do come to an end, including epic fishing adventures. It's hard to leave. It's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. Um, but that said, we know we can come back here next year and fish with Adrian and real obsession sport fishing. We're gonna be bringing home a lot of fish, which is great. As fresh as you can get it. You can't buy it anywhere like that. No, no. So we'll be eating good for the next year. Right, hopefully and, uh, it gets us all the way through to next year. All the way through to the next year <laughs> when we can once again head on down here to Zabalos. And we encourage uh, our viewers on Northwest Fishing Reports to check out Real Obsession Sport Fishing. Um, we often do member adventures, and when you come down here on a member adventure, you have the opportunity to maybe get in some of the filming that we do. Get a t-shirt, some get great swag from Toyota. Keep an eye out when we announce these uh, member adventures. We'd love to have you join us. I wanna thank our sponsors. There you go. Especially sponsors like Real Obsession Sport Fishing that yes. makes all this possible. Absolutely. But there's the Toyota dealers of the Inland Northwest, Ace Hardware, the General Store, Precision Propeller, the Dallas Chamber of Commerce, Max Lure, Best Western Pepper Tree Inns, and everybody else that makes this else. possible. So we'll see you guys on the water and online. Bites on here. Great weather, finishing strong. I sure love getting out here. The last day. <laughs> Pretty good way to end a trip. Getting her done, yep. <laughs>